though we are not able to gather with our super seniors, we want to honor them always. And so I did not, I was not informed by God to change anything. And so the sermon today is based on the fact that today is Super Senior Sunday. So with that in mind, let's again go back. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation, my Lord. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seats. And so on this Super Senior Sunday, I want to minister from the sermon topic, a praying mother's song. A praying mother's song. With a song, you can sing forth that which your heart is feeling. Indeed, there is a song that will arise within you to suit the occasion for which you are currently going through. Now, there will be times when you are going through and you cannot even birth a song. Anybody ever been there? You couldn't. I mean, you, know, you knew these songs, but you just couldn't, couldn't birth it. And there will be those times when you cannot even birth a familiar song to help you through. Recall that the Israelites hung their harps in the trees and refused to sing when they were in captivity. Psalms 137, 1 through 4, listen to them, listen. By the rivers, oh, here we go. I'm glad I didn't mention this. They would have been somewhere of this. By the rivers of Babylon. By the rivers of Babylon. They sat down. Uh -huh. There we were. Uh -huh. When we remembered Sire. Let's do it again. Yeah, by the rivers of Babylon. Where we sat down. Stop it, stop it. Stop it. Yeah, Bob Marley threw back. Woo. Up Somerset Bridge, I was about 11 or 12 years old. Lord of mercy. All right, we're back, we're back. Verse 2. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive... <laughs> required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? No, 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 I want to say it here, uh, that during this time, during this season in Bermuda, we are in strange land. We are in a strange territory. We never have had to worship like this before. We've never in the history of Bermuda experienced this before. Can I say something here? Whenever you get tempted to hang your harp in the willow tree, run away from the willow tree, take your harp, go by the rivers of life, go sit somewhere by the, a beach in Bermuda and play the harp anyway and sing your song anyway. This is the time when the enemy wants to shut you down. Down. Now, one commentary called this refusal to sing the fruit of the captivity in Babylon. Yes, sometimes you can be so down that you cannot birth a ballad. You cannot saturate the atmosphere with a song. You cannot even hum a hymn. Now, contrast this, uh, this moment to another moment. This is when King David returned the Ark of the Covenant back to its place in the right way. Now, the first time it was done in a way that displeased God. This caused, caused Uzzah, his 
life after he had touched the Ark of the Covenant. Now the next time David got it right, perhaps I need a pocket right there. You can do something wrong, but the next time you can get it right. Aren't you glad that we serve a God of a second chance? I, I, I am. Uh huh. In, in First Chronicles 15, 27 and 28, it reads, And David was clothed with a robe of fine linen, and all the Levites that bear the ark and the singers and and Shanina, the master of the song with the singers. David also had upon him an ephod of linen. Lord have mercy. Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting. I don't know who said about churches need to be quiet. With shouting, uh-huh. With the sound of the cornet. I don't know whose church says we shouldn't have music. I know what Bible to read. And with trumpets, Lord have mercy. And with cymbals, Making a no did they say make a noise? Then they say whisper and, they say, and making a noise with sultries and hops. Well, I didn't plan this, but it looks like I got a few noise makers. Can we can we take a moment? Can, 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 oh, what is God? Come on, come on. Oh, I think I want to make some noise. I was yes, it's noisy, but can I tell you? That when I think of God, when I think of his goodness, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my heart cries out. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God for saving, for saving me. You have something to shout about. And any time you get together with God's people, and we don't need a physical Ark of the Covenant. You are the Ark of the Covenant. You carry the presence of the Lord. So David knew what it was to sing, to sing a song. Listen, listen. Depending on your present mood, your present experience, you will either retain a song within you or release a song without you. A, a song is an expression of your heart's interpretation of what you're going through. Yeah. Uh, this is where I thought of our super seniors. And I know each of them have particular songs that they sing throughout the day. Now, I, I didn't do a survey. I just said, bring them back. God, bring me back. Bring back the songs. Songs like, Jesus, hold my hand. I need thee every hour. Through this barren land, protect me by your saving power. Hear my humble plea. Oh, Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I know I'll meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Now, I've only got the titles here. I don't know why I'm getting so happy repeating all of that. Song like, just another day that the Lord has kept me. How about this one? Prayer bells of heaven. Oh, how sweetly they ring. Bearing a message unto Jesus the King. When you are burdened down with Ring on and on and... Hey, that's a hot one. Oh, yeah. Prayer bells of heaven. Oh, how sweetly they ring. When you are burning down with trouble and care, ring on and on and we'll answer you. I can see them now, up and down, in the kitchen, in the hallway, just working it. What? Got the urn aisle. Aisle number one, aisle number one. <laughs> Glory to God. Let me just try to list the song topics. That's all I want to do. How about this? Amazing grace. Okay, amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. Woo. See, see, and that's the thing about these songs. Y'all troublemaker. That's the thing about the songs. They stir. 
Anybody get? They stir up a praise. They stir up a memory. They stir up a thank you, Jesus. They stir up a glory be to God because of what you've been through. My God, the power of a song. Sheba Yad Thank you. Speaking of, thank you. Here's a song. Um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want. That's all. Just, I mean, it doesn't. Oh, she stop. Stop, stop, stop that. Stop that. Start the trouble around her. How about shake it? Just want to thank him. I just want to thank him. I just want to thank him. I just want to thank him. Hey, 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 hey. I'm just thanking him. That's all. Just giving him thanks. Just giving him thanks. Glory to God. Make me get mad up at her. Just, just, just trying to get through a little list. All I'm trying to do is get through a list. Just trying to, just trying to get through a list is all. That's all he wants to hear, you know. Hey. That's all he wants. Oh, Lord. Now, I don't know why I wrote this one next. This is the last one I need right now. But anyway, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my heart cries out. My heart cries out. My heart cries out. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Praise God for saving me. Okay, maybe this last one will just calm us down a bit. Count your blessings. <laughs> Count your blessings. Name them one by one. What? You'll be, you'll be surprised to see what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Oh, yeah, you're going to be surprised to see exactly what God has done for you. And then I've got dot, 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 and so many more. I'm glad I didn't think of any more. Trouble. Pentecostal churches get you in trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, and so today... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Their, say, their seniors never mattered about time. They weren't rushing home to, to Netflix. They weren't rushing home to anything. They just, once they got in the house, that was it. it it's time. To, what time is it time for worship? What time is it now? Time for worship. Well, well, what time is it now? I said it's time. Lord have mercy. It's time for worship. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Oh, my God. My Lord. Yeah. All right, so, 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 so. I'm, I'm even moving my contacts, I'm okay. Here we go. So today, I celebrate seniors who know what to sing. Listen, they know what to sing. This is what is important. But when you know what to sing, watch this, it matters less how you sing, good Lord. It matters less how, watch this, I thought you would like this, director. It matters less how sharp you sing or how flat you sing. Hey, 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 just sing. All right, all right, now, now, now watch, uh-huh, watch this. I find, I find that the present generation is more concerned with the how rather than the what. You see, songs of the heart, watch this, never grow old. Why not? Because the testimony that birthed the song ever remains. Your testimony continues to trumpet how God brought you through by that song that you sing. So seniors, super seniors, 
I thank God for keeping you, and he's keeping them. I, I know we lost our elders during this season, but I'm telling you, he's keeping our seniors. He's, he's yet faithful. I, I believe it. I thank God for you still have your worship. You still love God and his holy place. I'm telling you that they want to come back in the house. I have to tell them, no, not yet. No, no, no. <laughs> My super seniors, our super seniors, well, you still love God in this holy place. You still desire to be found in the very midst of God's people. Yes, time has moved on, and yet, like another songwriter wrote, oh, Lord, I shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the rivers of water, I shall not be moved. Uh-huh. So today... Oh, glad I got through their songs. Whew. So today, we shall visit with a woman. Although not a senior, because of the goodness of God to her, uh, she was having a senior moment of a sing-song moment. She had been through much, and now she serenades God with her song. It's called Hannah's Song. Let's understand why Hannah birthed this song and why super senior sing as we deal with the following three points. Point number one, the focus. The focus. Point number two, the first. The first. And point number three, the foresight. The foresight. Let's deal with it. Point number one, the focus. Verse one again. And Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. Lord have mercy. And, and let me just pocket it for a moment. She says, I rejoice in thy salvation. In other words, I'm rejoicing in what God is doing. You see, very careful, very careful there. As long, I, I can celebrate you, but my rejoicing, uh, where my joy stems from, must be from God. So, so that's a point to note right there. It's Hannah's song, and yet Hannah realizes, she knows that the focus must be God. I said something there. It's her song, but the focus is God. Can I tell you that no matter what you go through, no matter what seems to be happening in your life, that you still, you got to focus. I know it's happening to you. I know it feels like it's all happening and concerning you, yet your focus must still be God. You see, she would not even be singing this song had not God stepped into her barren, bleak, and even belligerent situation. God could have left her dealing with Penina. God could have left her childless and continuing to experience the chiding of Penina. Yet at this point, after having uh, uh, birthed her son, Samuel, and then having another five children, I love that about God. You ask, don't, no, be very careful what you ask God for. You ask God for one, he going to give you more. She said, you know, and I was thinking today, so this is a fresh thought. All right, catch this, right? Because she actually had five more children. She had, children. She had six all together. But I was pondering our singing, and I thought about the scripture as it was being read. And I said, hmm, the Bible says that she had full, full maturity, like she had seven. I said, well, how can I work Hannah having seven children? And I got it. She birthed Samuel for herself and Samuel for God's house. That makes two. Ha, huh, you like that, Elder James? Uh-huh. He, he was conceived and he was born for a double purpose. It wasn't just for Hannah. It was for the house of the Lord. So if you count Samuel twice, you like that, Sister Jacob? If you count him twice, she has seven. Her, she's full of children. She's full of children. Just wanted to share that. Uh-huh. Uh, she actually, though, different DNA. She had five other children. She knew that her help had come from the Lord God of Israel. Her son Samuel, his name means God heard. Lord have mercy. You know, I have my number three. I could call her Samuel. I should call her Samuel. Maybe I'll call her Samuel today because God heard my cry every time God comes through. My God. Can I say this to you, Sister Grant? You can call your situation Samuel. <laughs> that you were going through something, but by God hurt you. And so that very situation becomes a Samuel situation that God, he heard. And church, any time, any time God hears your prayers and answers that prayer, it is time to render 
unto God a prayer of thanks and then rejoice. I know about you, but every time I reach a Sunday, I say, God, I thank you. I thank you that I'm healthy. I, I breathe in extra. I say, God, I thank you that oxygen's going to my lungs. God, I thank you, God, that you're keeping Bermuda, God, in, in spite of ourselves. God, I thank you for every prayer intercessor. My God, from one end to the other end of the island, one end to another, they're praying and, and they're calling on God and they're having faith and confidence in God that in spite of all, God's going to keep Bermuda. And that's our prayer. And that's why we should give them thanks. Every day we should have a heart filled with thanks for what God is doing for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got a child who is working in, in, in the essential industries. Huh? I, I got one. Almost six, five to six days a week in there. You think I'm that, come on, huh? You got your heart, come on, huh? Mm -hmm. Faithful. Abashi. Can I say that because of our faithfulness over the decades, that this could be a reaping time right now. We don't know what the enemy could have done, but we're reaping the harvest because of faithfulness. Oh, Yaraboshi. Hear me, hear me, hear me. And so Hannah, this is what she is doing. She is rejoicing in song as to the wonderful works of God towards her. God could have left her. He could have left her bitter. But God chose to have her better. Uh huh. God could have left her crying, but God chose to have her cradle a son. My, 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 my. God could have left her sorrowful, but God chose to have her sing. I'm telling you, that's why you better rejoice. Don't take for granted what God is doing for you. I may not be a okay in every way, but every day, my God, God is keeping us. He's keeping us with our heart and our mind stayed on Him. Be glad when you can sing. Be excited when a song hits your spirit and you begin to weep. Sometimes singing that song will make you weep. Not tears of pain, but my God, even in this situation, I can still feel your presence. Even in this situation, can't gather like I want to, can't go when I want to, can't move around like I want to. Yet in this situation, you still touch my heart. You touch the city of my soul, and I can still sing a song. That's something to rejoice about. You see, a song can melt your heart because of the memories causing you to sing melodies from heaven. Mm -hmm. Hannah, in this very verse here, says that her horn is exalted. Oh, yes, this is indeed something to rejoice about. There's no more shame. She is no longer considered poor Hannah. She is no longer considered cursed because she cannot bring forth. No, God has shifted her circumstances, and now she can lift her head. Now, in study, we find that the Eastern women, women of Lebanon, they wore a silver horn on their heads. Uh, this headpiece for dress carried meaning. For the barren woman, it was lowered. And for the woman who had become a mother, it was tilted upwards. Uh, this would mean, my Lord, uh huh, that another could merely look upon you. Ye could look upon you and know whether you were blessed with a child or not. Can you imagine that? Going around the city, seeing all the ones younger than you. Oh, their, their horn is lifted up. Seeing the ones who are older than you, their children are growing up. Their horn is lifted up. Yet you watch this. Now, this thing gets deep. You're going to the temple every day. You're going in the temple. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Your husband is a priest. He's working for the Lord. You mean that you can be working for the Lord and things not turn, turn around and be just how you think they should be? You mean you can be faithful to God? and it looks like God is not faithful to you? Can I tell you God is faithful no matter what? And you just have to learn to hold on and wait on God and watch him come through for you. God is faithful. Uh-huh. So everyone looked upon her and called her cursed. Everyone now with the birth of Samuel can tell that she is blessed. Here comes verse 2. There is none holy 
as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. What? Neither is there any rock like our God. Lord, have mercy. You talking about when God rocks your world? <laughs> My Lord, when God comes through? Oh, yes, Hannah is rejoicing. She is singing that God is her rock. Oh, yes, when she felt like the world was heavy upon her in the past, today she can actually state that she was actually being kept by the rock of her salvation. Oh, my, I know what you're going through. I see you rocking now, Tyra. I've been waiting for the rock. You think I don't know my people? I've been waiting for the rock. Uh, can I tell you that's how, what you got to do? In spite of the grieving, you rock on. In spite of what others think, you rock on. In spite of what you know, you rock on. Whether you know he's saved, died, saved, or not, you rock on. Uh, you just got to rock. You got to understand, mm, God, uh, be like the old mothers in Zion. Uh, they didn't know what to say, but they knew how to rock. Ah, they didn't have all the words like semen sometimes has, but they knew how to rock. And that rocking was a story. That rocking was a witness. It was a testimony that God is my rock. When the enemy wanted to rock her world to a place of devastation, she acknowledges there that even while going through, she never anchored herself to any place but the rock. Huh? Can't trust man like this. Arm of flesh will fail you. Semen will fail you. So I advise you to be anchored where I'm anchored, in the rock of our salvation, in Jesus Christ, the solid rock. On Christ. The solid rock I stand. I'm trying not to sing. All other ground. Is sinking sand. Oh, on the ground is sinking sand. Oh, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. What if Bermuda knew that? With all we want to try, what, what if the whole of Bermuda understood that the only thing keeping this rock afloat is Jesus? And that if we, we uh, forget quote of faith for a moment, where the gods lead us. Ain't no gods leading me anywhere. Only Jesus Christ, the solid rock. He's my refuge. He's my shelter. He's my savior. He's my Lord, my king. Christ, the solid rock. So Hannah is, she's rejoicing. Yet, be aware, number two, the foes. <laughs> it's like, because you're happy, you think everybody has to be happy? Wrong. The first, <laughs> I often say that we preach about and celebrate those who experience torturous times. We thank God for them, and sometimes we don't fully grasp that we are celebrating those who experience certain hardship. They experience hardship, but they never left their relationship with God. Uh -huh. they, they, they experience hardship, but they kept hold tightly to the one who would guide their ship. I remember an old lady. What's her name? Mother somebody. Ship. Well, you know, Mother um, the Shields. Ship ahoy! Mother Cynthia the Shields. Ship ahoy! What's the rest of it? And now I can sing. Ship. Ahoy. <laughs> Mother DeShield used to sing that song, boy. And she had that rich, sub, rich, I don't know, it was Contro Alto? My, look, there he goes, Contro Alto. You always must have a song in your heart. That's what I'm telling you. That's what the old saints understood. When you're going through, you must be sure 
to go through with God. Hannah didn't have it easy. She felt like she had disappointed her husband. She felt awful for the turn in the attitude of Penina, but had to bear it because she had borne her husband and her a child. She was ashamed as she walked out in public because she had no child. All of this, can you imagine the emotional baggage that she carried around? And yet she did something. She carried it to God. She prayed, and God heard her, and God caused her to triumph, Lord have mercy, over the mouths. I wish she would. Cause him to shut it up, shut up. <laughs> triumph over the mouths of her enemies, her foes. She did not have to lift a hand. Instead, she lifted her voice to God. She did not have to lift a hand. Instead, she lifted her heart to God. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, Rejoice, sing to God. Then, of course, Brother Herman, you would know this is one of my favorites. I love you, Lord, you heard my cry. And pitied every groan. Long as I live, come on now, and troubles rise, I'll hasten to your throne. And the trouble comes, I'm running. I ain't running away, I'm running to God. Come on. I'm not running away from, like I'm afraid, like I don't have any confidence, but I, I know who my God is. I know that in this situation, he's going to do marvelous exploits. He's going to stand up in this situation. He's going to make himself known. He's going to speak loudly. He's going to speak clearly. He's going to demonstrate to the world that he is my God. He is my rock. He is my fortress. And whenever I call, him daddy daddy ever father I need you he's gonna come through and that's why I'll I'll hasten I'll hasten to oh my god I'll hasten to his to his throne now Hannah now Hannah can watch God watch this <laughs> beat up on those who desire to beat her up did I say that? <laughs> you know I had a moment. You know I had a moment. <laughs> Leave it to God. <laughs> That's why you do know Hannah's my favorite Bible. Okay, okay. Leave it to God. Whatever God decides, be at peace with that. Watch this. See, see you got to take, you got to understand this. God, if you beat them up, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to thank you. God, if you bless them, I'm still going to praise you. Come on, leave it to God. And whatever God's decision is, God is right. In the meantime, no matter what goes on, I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to rejoice. Why am I doing that? Because my horn used to be turned down, and you turned it up. And so, God, it's not about them. It's about you. God, you could have left it tilted down, but, God, you turned it around. He's a turnaround God. Won't he turn it around? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. So here in verse 3 of Hannah's song, listen to it. Verse 3. Talk no more exceeding proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. God knows. And by him actions are weighed. I love this verse. There are times when people come directly at me to take me out. And I look towards the holy hill. I look towards the holy temple, and I say, God, you see this? Ow! Mm -hmm. God, you see this? I say that knowing that God does see it, and that in seeing it, God will come and see about me. 
Now, now, don't miss that. I didn't say I'm waiting for God to see about them. I say, I'm, God, come and see about me. Fix me before I get the wrong attitude. Fix me before I decide to take it in my hands and mess things up. Fix me that I can keep my mouth shut at this moment. Fix me that I can remain steadfast at this time. Fix me that I continue to hold on to the rock. That's all you got to worry about. Don't worry about them. Ask God, fix me. This is the attitude of this verse. God will weigh the actions of those who dare to rise against you. God has a scale of perfect balance. And God will walk in justice for all those who are his. This is when you have to be still and know that he is God. Oh, Lord, just be still. Let God be God in your life. Don't you try to be a God in the matter. Let God handle your matter. You see, we often weigh the actions of others by our mindset. Our mindset is not the mindset of God. That's not God's set. But I'd be like, if I was God, like, okay, this would be a perfect time, God, to let a bolt come out of heaven and zap them. That, see, that's me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm still human. I'm working on me. Like, God, wouldn't this be a good time just to, like, hold your breath for them for about two, two seconds, just scare them? But that's, 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 that's me. Look how evil my heart is. You see how desperately wicked it can be? And let me tell you, watch this. I want you to get this. The more creative a person you are, the more battles you're going to have. Because my mind can go all over the place. Oh, my gosh, I'll be Mark as well. I'll be MD, Tally Savalas. Bring them all in. Let's do something. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be having this thing. The mind, the mind. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you. So, so, so I have to realize, okay, guess what, Maria? You're carnal. You're, you're, you're earthbound, okay? Lift your spirit. Get, get in the right place. And, and then I understand this right here, Isaiah uh, 55, 8 and 9. And it reads, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Oh, <laughs> neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. Okay. But as the heavens uh -huh, are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, I don't know about you. But if God's ways, and they are, are higher, then, then I want the higher attitude. I want the higher standard, not my standard. So leave the matter to God. God will handle it. That takes me to point three. Oh, my gosh. I thought 2,700 words would be longer than this. Mm. I'm very disappointed. I need to go up to 3,000. Okay. <laughs> Point three, <laughs> the foresight, the foresight. The foresight of God is amazing. <laughs> yes, God knows our end from our beginning. Come on. The scroll of our lives has already been completed, and we are walking out what God has already worked out. My, my, my. Here in verses 5 through 10, Hannah speaks to, to how God is omnipotent. God can create something out of nothing, and so surely God can do what he wills to do with all that he has created. God has the extremities taken care of, and we must, what we must do is trust that God knows where in the in-between places he needs to take care of you and me. He knows your am from the beginning, and, and I, I admit it, the in-between time, the meantime can be mean. It really can be mean at times, but we got to trust God. Look at verse 4. The bows of the mighty man are broken. I want you to picture everything. The bows of the mighty man are broken. And they that stumbled are guarded with strength. <laughs> so I thought on this, and quickly I was inspired by the Holy Spirit to understand why Hannah began to talk to the extremities or the opposites of things. She talks what she has walked. You see, she was, she was once fruitless, but now she's fruitful. Lord have mercy. You see, she was once heartbroken, but now she is heart fixed. Uh, you see, she was once completely shattered, 
but now she completely shines forth basking in the glory of God. Listen, anytime you've been so down, 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 you're down this place, you couldn't get any downer than that down, and then God takes you up, 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 up to a high place so you feel like you're walking on a mountain and that you can see the whole panoramic view. That's a reason to understand that God has you in the palm of his hand. God has your beginning and God has your end. God has the extremities of your life. So no matter what you go through in the meantime, even when it seems mean, you got to understand God still has my end in view. Come on now. So, <laughs> yes, she speaks to how God will move you from a zero to a hero. <laughs> how God will move you from nothing to everything. How God will take you from depletion to completion. I like that. Oh, <laughs> somebody in here, I don't have enough. I don't think I have enough. I don't know where I'm going. Can I tell you that God has already completed where you're going? Uh, maybe what you just need to do is trust him with the first step. Huh? He'll take one step. He'll, he'll take care of the rest. Uh, sometimes, what? Come on, just, just understand. With every step you take, God is in charge of the next one. Uh, don't, don't look down at the step. Look up to God. God, I'm moving. God, I'm going forward. I'm moving forward in faith. I can't see it. I can't understand it. But God, I'm rejoicing in you because you're omniscient. You see everything. You're, you understand everything. Well, you got to trust God. So, so, so watch this. This is what, yeah, this is what she's doing. In this verse 4, the mighty are broken. <laughs> Don't ever think you're in, uh, somebody's in, in, invulnerable, unbreakable, it can never be taken down, really? <laughs> yeah, they can. I ain't saying nothing right there. Uh-huh. He said, the mighty, I can't say it seems, the mighty are broken down. And the ones that have stumbled now have strength. Come on, come on. You got to know who your father is. So that when you feel that you're weak, remember what he does. He causes you to have strength. My God, this is a reason to sing and shout. Makes me feel like dancing all the time I think about it. Then now let's look at verse 5, verse 5. They, picture it, they that were full have hired out themselves for bread. And they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven. And she that hath many children is wax feeble. Oh, <laughs> let's talk about it. Thus it hath their cabinets full. Now I have to work to get food for the day. Those who were hungry didn't have to work like that anymore. Oh, come on, don't tell me God won't change your circumstances. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. The women, watch this, the women who had no children now are full of children. She had children running all around the house, while the one who had children is now old and tired. <laughs> Hannah is saying, I've got seven, I've got six children. He was like seven. I've got six children, and I've got strength. Look at me, I'm moving, I'm moving. Come on, I'm feeding them all lunch, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Doing up all the Hebrew clothes for Hebrew school. Got them all, got them all doing everything, keeping the house clean. Got strength, got energy. But the ones that had children, with the three children and the two children, can hardly move. I'm telling you, when God is ready to bless you, he will supernaturally endow you with the strength to serve, with the ability to move and do. Why? Because it was not in your timing. It's in the perfect timing of God. <laughs> then I want to look at this term, waxed, feeble, coming from the word amal. This is the one that had the children that was teasing her. They were saying, look at Hannah. <laughs> and, she's, and, she, and she's a person who works in the house of the Lord. Look at her. But now they're wax feeble, amal, meaning malady or malignant. Now, you know that's not a good word. It means to be weak, to droop, to languish, to be exhausted, to be sick. Anytime you see young parents and they're tired, something wrong with that. How are you waxing feeble in your 20-something? 
I remember I used to bring my, my, my nephews and great nephews up the house. I would have them organized. You saw my pictures. Everything organized. Everything lined up. Send them home to the mama, mama con, iron a shirt. Can't get them ready for school. Here I am, an old woman. Older than them. <laughs> Why? Because they're, watch this. I believe it is a joy to serve the children. I, I believe it is an honor, watch this, to be considered young enough to keep up with the children you have. <laughs> Look at six and seven. Listen to what she's saying. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and he lifteth up. In other words, she's saying God is sovereign. There's no power outside of his control. God is omnipotent. All power belongs to him. There is none so powerful as God. Again, Hannah is rejoicing and singing about who God is and what he can do and what he will do. God, he will kill you or keep you. Now, that's a word right there. See, one of the reasons, hear me, hear me. Hmm, yeah, Holy Ghost. I watch whose company I keep. I watch who I surround myself with. Because the question is, are they going to commit second-degree murder? Ah, I'm saying something heavy in it. In other words, are they going to kill the joy that is within me? Are they going to kill it, or are they going to cause it to grow? You have to monitor who you are around. You're excited about church, and then all of a sudden, church didn't mean anything. Who been a killer around you? But here's the thing that I rejoice about, that when we come to God and we repent and we desire for God to do that which only he can do, he can kill you or keep you. All you've got to do is have a heart. Don't tell me about being backslidden. Don't tell me about having a child out of wedlock. I, that's not my concern. My concern is what are you feeling? Do you want to be killed or do you want to be kept? The verdict, it's up to you. God can make you or break you. Do you hear me? I don't look at people and say, oh, they're going to break me. No, 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 no. I don't give them that type of power. All power belongs to the omnipotent one. And if I really believe in the sanctuary, if I really believe in, in that secret place, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the old, what most high shall abide under the shadow of the old, huh? That, that nothing shall come nigh my dwelling? That tells me the power of God. I got to remind God of his word. Yes. I, uh, and have my hands clean so that the word can apply. God can impoverish you or enrich you. God can take you down or build you up. What am I saying? My purpose, my destiny is not dependent. I'm just going to take a sip before I say this. I want to be clear. My purpose, my destiny is not dependent on any rules, laws that the government of Bermuda puts in place. Mm-mm, mm-mm. No. They can let loose. They can say you can smoke ganja, cocaine, heroin, LSD. Go for it. And I've got to understand that I am a child of yeah. God and that my standard is God's standard. And therefore, no matter what they let loose, I've got to understand that God will cause one to be successful or he'll release you to your own demise and you will experience the wrath of God. Let me say this. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A nation that fears God takes care of his seniors and his children. A nation, I didn't say you don't know about God. I said that fears God, but not being, bring destruction upon the land because of mammon. I would never put money before the life of a human being. That battle prayer as never before. Hannah understands God will do what God will do. 
So what a song this is. Hannah is singing a powerful song indeed, for she is exclaiming through song that God is God and that there is none before God, beside God, or beyond God. So perhaps, perhaps, perhaps we should seek God about what to do next. Her confidence is not in man. But she, she knows that her own body had failed her. Listen, she knows this. Woman knows her body. Every month, for decades, her body failed her. It was consistent in failure. There, you know, there was nothing that Alcana, her husband, was able to do about that. Because apparently his body was okay. Okay. Benina had it, had the job. Okay. Hmm. Listen. When you know that God did it, you will rejoice. This is what she's doing. She's saying, my body was dead. He will make alive. Every time she walked down the street, she was saying, I was dead, but God made me alive. And then this girl, she must have been a Pentecostal Old Testament person because she must have said, not only did he make me alive, he made me alive, 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 alive. I'm sure she wrote it. She didn't write that song, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. She didn't write that? Oh, Lord Jesus. She would have sang it, though. My God, maybe when I get in paradise, I'll check her out if I'm there early. If not, I'll catch her in heaven. Ah, I say, God, what, what was the song? You say, do you know the song, when I think of the goodness of Jesus? And maybe we'll have a dance right by the rivers. <laughs> my God, my God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God will do. She rejoiced. She knew that God did it. The reason our super seniors are still singing and shouting and worshiping is because of the memories of how God, how powerful God is and how powerful God has been in their lives. The memories will not leave them. So she brings her, so the, they bring their memories, our super seniors, they bring their memories to church. Some of us don't even, you've got to bring your memories to Right now, everybody's memory is clear. Well, for three months, I haven't been able to be in church. But if God, if God's son, Jesus, if he tarries uh, three years from now, I hope I'm still got an excited church. I hope I've still got a church full of the joy of the Lord. Huh? By that time, I got an orchestra. My Lord, I got a horn section. Director! <laughs> got two drum sets, Lord of mercy. Two sets of drums. Oh, Lord, I'm feeling that. Two keyboardists. Well, I'm trying to set up something. You see, when I get excited, you write it down, it means it's going to come to pass. I've got it all coming together. Why? Because in the meantime, in the time that looks means, feels means, sometimes it is mean. Well, God, even in the meantime, I'm going to lift up my hand, I'm going to lift up my horn, and I'm going to rejoice. Why? Because it could have been otherwise. Somebody wanted semen destroyed, but you've delivered her. Somebody wanted you destroyed, but God has delivered you. Somebody wanted you not to enter into this church again, but here you come with yourself <laughs> with a big bad praise on your lips. Somebody wanted to make sure that you never glorify God, but yet you stand ready to give God the glory. Oh, the enemy wanted to buffet you, but he didn't realize it was a buffet. It was a buffet that God was just preparing a table set before me in the presence of my enemies. That's why I can rejoice. That's why I can sing. That's why I can shout and dance. That's why I can skip and shout. That's why I can wave my hands because of the goodness of God. He hasn't been a lazy God. He hasn't been a sometimey God. He's been a God of the morning, a God in the nighttime, a God in sorrow, a God in joy, a God every time I need him. That's why she rejoices. I'm winding down, I'm winding down. Bring your memories to church. That's all, that's all I want you to do. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Huh? So you don't get distracted, just bring your memories to church. You are stronger when you remember what God has done for you. What? See, and I remember in class, I think it's discipleship class, the one thing people can't doubt can't come against is your own testimony. 
<laughs> I asked what to make me shout Ron here today. I'm already shouting, somebody said, okay. Well, I'll shout on one. Hmm? Oh, when I had to take my basal body temperature, huh? When I had to pop pills and uh, keep a little temperature chart, huh? When I had to take Pergonol, when I was just about to take Clomid, uh, huh? All that, trying to do everything, trying to do what a biologi biologically I, I thought I needed to do. Uh, but one day I was at Somerset Church, uh, by the, the one that used to be a, a theater, the one that looks broken down, busted, and disgusted. Well, I tell you what, every time I go through that place, uh, go past that place, taking mama for a drive, I remember, I remember, I remember. Maria, remember when I think it was Pastor Tomlinson or, or Bishop Blair, one of them was preaching there, and he said, if you are believing God for something, I want you to walk in those promises. I literally believed him. I went home, and I wrote on a piece of paper, I want a baby, and I put that paper in my shoe. It wasn't about Kent Seaman, Peter Seaman. It wasn't about Maria Seaman. It was that I said, God, you make alive. God, whatever's dead, my God, make it alive. I I stopped taking medication. I stopped taking my temperature. And before I knew it, I was now carrying a rich child. And just to put God is some sort of God, he said, not only will I show you that my hand is upon you and that I am in charge of the matter, but your child will be born the seventh day of the week, the seventh month, the seventh month of the year. Seven, seven, seven on a Saturday, seventh day of the seventh month. Not only that, this week he reminded me, he said, remember the time she was born? Because I was trying to think, I said, it should be a seven. And it was 133. I'm so dumb sometimes, I don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. So this week he says, well, add up 133. I said, seven. He said, yes. He said, she was even born with sevens at 1.33 p.m. Sometimes I'm so dumb, I'm brilliant. I'm brilliantly dumb. I'm brilliantly dumb. But can I tell you that, that you want to listen? I don't lose my memory. I can go past spots in Bermuda and remember when I cried, remember when I prayed, remember when I rejoiced. So every time I come into God's house, I don't lose my memories. I remember what God has done. When I think I got to do it again of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my heart cries out. Praise God. Praise God. You don't lose your memory. And so we're winding down here. Well, not really. Verse 8. I thought I was. He raises up, look at God, the poor out of the dust. You ever said you're dirt poor? <laughs> Dirt poor. <laughs> he raises up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. The, the earth is the pillars, and it's got the world resting on the earth. Any God can do this. Church, this is some song. You can be dirt poor, and God will lift you up. He brought me out I'm not, of the miry clay. He placed my feet on a righteous day. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. And then here's another one. Oh, the one same song. He lifted me up from the miry clay. He planted my feet on the king's highway. That's the reason why I sing and I shout. The Savior came down, 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 and lifted me up. Up, up, oh, see, see, now that, that could be a skank right there. <laughs> that could have a beat. We're working on that. Ah, God will take you from the dunghill, the waste pile. Come on, come on. The place of refuse, he'll take you from those places and put you in a palace. Oh, see, see, that's another thing. I drive around and I see so many beautiful houses in Bermuda, and not all of them are large. The beauty is what you do with what you have. That's what I've discovered. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Your palace. So all of this, look at what God will do. Why? Because the entire earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Verse 9. He will keep the feet of his saints. Oh. <laughs> and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. 
for by strength shall no man prevail. <laughs> it doesn't matter how strong your adversary is, God is a keeper, and God will keep you. God will cause the loud mouths of your adversaries to be silent. <laughs> yes, he will. <laughs> Who would not want to serve a God like our God? No one will prevail against you because the eternal God is your refuge and strength. God is a very present help in time of trouble. And then our final verse for the day, verse 10. The adversaries of the Lord, <laughs> I almost wanted to go down and pray for him right here. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Are you anointed? My Lord, you shouldn't be walking around with your head down. <laughs> Lift up your heads. Oh, you gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. There's no locked entrance whereby God cannot enter into your situation. You just have to have a mindset, your heart open to the things of God. So God is saying, look, God will break them, and when God, what God breaks, no one will ever be able to put them back together. That's what I feel sorry for him. God will judge, and God will render the verdict, and God will set the sentence. And at the end of it all, God will lift up his anointed ones. Right there. Oh, please understand, God knows who you are. And they know that you, God knows that you are his, and God will take care of those who are his director. So super seniors, Hannah, sing on. <laughs> My mom was singing. Right there. That's why I take the long drives, especially if you listen to the radio 105. Um, like between 12.30 and 1, all the old songs. I must confess, I haven't done it. I really want to record her, because I can do that, but I'm not supposed to, so I, I kind of, I'm confessing. I, I, because once she starts singing, yesterday I caught a little snippet of her singing on the couch. Been to death's door. Huh. The door was open. They said, family, we're going to try this one last thing. They're in Boston. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We made it out of Bermuda. Well, here, what do you mean you've got one last thing to try? I know who heard it like I did. I said, oh my God, no. We're going to make this last adjustment, and if you don't change, we don't know what to do. Sleep was tough that night. What would be the verdict? What kind of song would I be singing in a week? God, I've got to keep singing. I'm so grateful. That last adjustment. And the blood was draining from her brain like it needed to. These are the professionals. I'm not the only one with a testimony. That's why when I see mama singing, sing on mama. I drive that car as much as I can. She's got this little inkling now, she likes the clock sisters. That's my jam. I tease her. I forget what song we were listening to yesterday going home. 
but it was a run that the Clark sisters were singing. So I kept saying, okay, mama, it's your turn. Never, 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 never. You know, she, she just laughed at me. She can sing. There are some things she does not remember, but she remembers the songs. Keisha. She remembers the songs. So sing on, Hannah. Sing on, super seniors. Sing on, mama. God has given you a reason to sing and a season of singing. Rejoice, and again, I say rejoice. God is not finished yet. God is still going to favor you. Ah. Uh, church, do you have a song? Do you have a favorite song? Do you have what I call a 911 rescue song? If you have to sing that song, and it's the only song, sing on. I've come too far from where I started from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody told me the road would be easy. And I don't believe he's brought me this far to me. I just can't give up now. I Some witness to your soul. quietly play directly. Like you, I am committed to God. That means no matter what happens, I remain God's servant. Some situations are going to just try me, try you. And you know the thing is, this is when I confess it's like, is this fear in the kingdom? But it's the trying of your faith. Work at patience and you produce more fruit about who you are. Until you know God through his son, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. You don't have this refuge. Now, I don't know. I'm looking in here. Is there anyone who is not a Christian? I think everyone. Is. How about rededication? You stay right in your seats because we don't, we don't put you on camera. You might say, you know what? I need it, it, two categories. I need to rededicate my life to Jesus Christ. If I'm talking to you, stand to your feet. 
You may also say, well, I'm a Christian pastor, but I'm telling you this. Sometimes I lose my song. And today you've encouraged me. I've got to grab onto my song. That may be you. I need you to stand to your feet. Come on. Come on now. The best place of deliverance is in truth. I'm telling you that right there, right now. Now, on Zoom, I'm talking to you, my members. Praying, God, give me strength. Give me grace. Sometimes you just go through those situations. Lord, have mercy. You can't sing. You've got to play the song. Play it until you can sing it. Yet, if you are not a Christian, who are you praying to? It can't be your personal God. It can't be through Jesus because he's not your Savior. This is your time to give your life to Jesus Christ. Somebody needs to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. Don't wait. Tomorrow's not promised. And listen, I think the tomorrows are getting shorter. I think time is just winding down. It's, it's closer than ever before. While you can hear the word and respond to the word and repent and be renewed, you need to make that choice right now. Because the night time is coming. If you think that these past three months have been a night season, they have been pretty bright compared to an eternity outside of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, outside of the kingdom. If you're not a Christian, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. I want you in the kingdom. You'll never be able to say you did not get an opportunity. Your opportunity is today. It's now. Don't think about tomorrow. Don't think about your friends. Don't think about all the liquor you got planned for picnics. Don't think about none of that. Because Jesus could come before that. Hell ain't no joke. Hell is real. I told you in the sermon, I want you to, want to explain this. God is the God of extremities. Heavens and the earth have been hell. Hell is real. You ain't going through no hell on earth. You think this is hell? I ain't with you. Hell is to come. If you die and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you go to Sheol. If you die and you're a Christian, you go to paradise. Paradise? I'm going to explain it today. Can I explain it about today? Paradise, we're all going to Hades. Yeah, that was some teacher, wasn't it? We're all going to Hades. The upper section is paradise. The bottom section is Sheol. If you die and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you will experience a temporary holding place that is hellish. I, the Christian, will experience a temporary place that is heavenly, called paradise. Ain't nobody dying and going to heaven. After the judgment, those who did not make it to paradise, you're going to hell. Those that made it to paradise, we're going to heaven. It's opposites. Your opportunity is now. Stop trying to outthink God and think about this earth and what you're going to do. I need you to hear me. Today is your time. Your time to enter into the family of God. If you so desire, yeah, I'm going, you, you, you wanted to escape how you should. The older I get, the hotter the heat gets. Repeat this sinner's prayer after me. I, I, I want to welcome you into the family of God. Repeat this prayer. Dear Lord, I come to you today. I am a sinner. God, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross as a sacrifice, the one and only sacrifice for the sins of mankind. Thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life a ransom for me. Today I choose to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I accept the work done on Golgotha's hill. Jesus, come into my heart and stay there. Abide in me. God, I thank you that because I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, that I am now a part of the family of God. God, I need your help every day so that I will walk as your word commands me to. Thank you for salvation today. In no other name but the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, if you did that, I want you to reach out to me. You can reach me at swim at logic.bm. Let us know. Let me know. Oh, boy, this will be awesome. The decision that you made today. You may stand in need of prayer. You gave your heart to the Lord. You want an extra prayer. You heard the sermon. You need extra encouragement. Well, we are now at the phone lines. There are two numbers I'm going to give to you. And you can call for prayer. The first number is area code 441-5049235. Five zero four nine two three five, and the other number is two nine five nine two three five two nine five nine two three five, and we've got members of our deacon board that are there at the phone waiting for you. You have a prayer request? Reach out. We want to connect with you. Certainly, God continue to bless you. God continue to guide you. Now, before I leave this pulpit area, I definitely need to pray, as I have and will continue to do so, for the government, the government of Bermuda, and certainly our premier. We all know that he had to make a tough decision this week, and I believe it was a decision of integrity. And so let's pray for the young man. Uh, a lot of pressure. You wouldn't believe the pressure that will be on someone. I don't have to talk to him. Anytime you're a leader, anytime you're a young leader and you're governing people that are older than you, it, it's pressure beyond pressure. And unless you have the Holy Spirit, this thing can take you to places. So we want to pray for our premier and pray for the island of Bermuda. Let's pray. Father, your faithfulness cannot be doubted. And because of your faithfulness towards us, you told us that we could come to you as our daddy, Abba Father. Approach your throne room boldly yet humble, asking yet begging. God, just, just laying ourselves before you. One more time, God, we place the island of Bermuda before you. God, even as we've opened up our borders and there have been imported cases, God, we pray that during the height of celebration season, July and August in Bermuda, God, that you will keep us aware of how we must carry ourselves. Father, we bring to you our premier, the Honorable David Burt. God, we pray that amidst of everything, God, that you, God, you, God, with your divine finger, your hand of comfort, you comfort him, God, when it feels like he's getting no encouragement from anyone and everybody's pulling him every which way but loose and everybody thinks they have the answer. God, speak to him. Ayarobo, shake it. Ayarobo, son. My God, let him make a decision that pleases you. Let him be a leader with a difference. Ah, yeah, God, you're able. God, and I pray that every government minister that works alongside of him, God, you'll continue to keep them. God, and, and, and keep them not just to be kept, but keep them with the wisdom that comes from you. My God, that they don't uh, do things that are of their own good, but they continually do things that are for the good of this place called Bermuda. We are a blessed island, and we will continue to speak that this island belongs to Jesus. And so, God, we pray again for the PLP government, for the essential workers, God, 
But I thank you for the many families that are receiving loved ones healthy and whole. My God, that, that they have a thank you in their mouth, a thank you on their lips. My God, that they can sing one of your songs because of what you have done. God, we will not fail to give you glory, honor, and praise for everything. You do it, and you keep, and we're thankful. God, we pray that even you would remember all the uh, scientists and the doctors, our sister Karika, Dr. Karika Loudon. God, I thank you for the gift of who she is. God, she ain't going to sweat it. That girl, she, she knows how to handle it. So we thank you for her. <laughs> and God, that you will continue to make her shine forth. The more they buff it, the greater she shines forth. God, you have your divine way. God, again, thank you. We don't take for granted that you keep Bermuda in spite of Bermudians. You keep us. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and God's people said, amen.